Hello, and welcome to your practices webinar series on advanced packaging. I'm Ramsey Salim, your practice lead at Tyndall National Institute, where we focus on system integration and advanced photonics packaging. <clears throat> this webinar continues our series where we step into the world of advanced photonics packaging. In the last episode, we looked at fiber to chip coupling using grating couplers. In today's episode, we focus on a specific type of grating coupler, apodized grating couplers. But before we jump into that, let's get familiar with the Zoom platform, which I'm sure many of you are already familiar with. The key thing here is that there is a Q and A button. If you have questions, please use the Q and A section to post these questions. We will collate the questions and answer them in a Q&A session after the talk. But to give you first a quick update, uh, so Na uh, Tyndall National Institute and Lionix International are now making the triplex silicon nitride technology available to your practice customers. This means that you can now access Lionix's silicon nitride technology from, um, you, can, you can get now with their wafer runs for biosensing, visible applications to telecoms and data comms. You can even access their PIC packaging. And they now also offer IC packaging as well for drivers. But we'll tell you more about this in a dedicated webinar in June. But without further delay, let me introduce you to my co-host, Dr. Francesco Flores, head of the training programs. Hello, Francesco. Hi, Ramsey. Hi, everybody. And with us as well today is Luca Zagaglia, who is helping develop our grating coupler technology here at Tyndall. Hi there, Luca. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Over to you, Francesco. Tell us, <laughs> what are you going to talk about today? Thanks, Ramsey. Yeah, so today uh, we will focus mainly on how we can boost uh, the coupling efficiency of a grating coupler, and we will see mainly two approaches, the so-called polysilicon overlay, and as you already mentioned, the apodization of the grating coupler, and then uh, I will show you why we should uh, choose uh, the apodized grating coupler with respect to the standard one, mainly due to coupling efficiency, performance improvement, and also, this is really, really important, the emission profile. I will explain briefly the scattering process. So the differences in the scattering process between the apodize and the standard grating coupler. And then something that is really interesting from the application point of view, because we will see how we can use all the information that we gathered so far to create something that can be used in real life. So I will introduce you to the grating couplers and then the concept of focusing grating couplers. So let's start the polysilicon overlay. We saw that the coupling efficiency of a standard grating coupler is usually when you work with a standard SOI, so the thickness of the silicon waveguide is 220 nanometer, around 55-60%. The main reason why it's so low is because the scattering strength, so the ability of the silicon, of the quantity of the material to properly scatter the light inside the waveguide is too weak. In order to improve it, we need to increase the effective refractive index. And the only way that we have to increase the effective refractive index is if we want to work with a standard grating coupler, increase the amount of material that is scattering the light. How can we do that? We can grow a little bit of polysilicon on top of the waveguide in the region of the waveguide where later we are going to realize the etching. So we deposit a bit of polysilicon overlay and then we etch. The result is that we have a deeper etch because we have the sum of the etching of the wall overlay plus a little bit of etching of the waveguide. So we have trenches that are thicker, so we have more material, the refractive index, the effective refractive index is higher, so the scattering strength is higher. Another approach is a light, in this case, a light beam is represented by a pulse. So it's something that is finite in the time domain. 
we can apply the same concept that we already applied for electronics. The main concept in this case is impedance matching. So we can think the light has a pulse that is fixed in time, and we want to adapt the impedance through the wall grating coupler. What we can do is we can linearly change the pitch along the longitudinal direction of the grating coupler, starting from something that is small, going to something that is wider. In this way, we are changing the effective index, but we are changing it, tuning it with respect to the specific response, physical response of the structure. Yeah, you can also add a second step in the apodization process by changing the height of the trenches. In this way, you can better match the effective index of the mode of the grating coupler and the effective index of the fundamental mode of the waveguide. In this way, you can reduce the light that is back reflected and the scattering processes. As you can see from the, from the electromagnetic spectrum of the, of the grating coupler, you can boost the coupling efficiency up to 80% and even further, reducing and minimizing the losses at the working wavelength. Yeah, exactly. But let's say it's not sufficient to focus our attention on the coupling efficiency. We also need a good quality of the shape of the beam. In this case, the main advantage of using an apodized grating coupler is that we can keep the same Gaussian beam shape that we have inside the waveguide. As you can see here, this is the Eigen mode of the nano wire, the um, uh, waveguide, sorry. And you can see that the shape of this mode is Gaussian. If we use a standard grating coupler, we have uh, this exponential law that is changing completely the mutual coherence information between the electric field components of our beam. In the case of an apodized grating coupler instead, the shape, so the envelope of the emitted beam is Gaussian. So we are maintaining, keeping the same mutual phase difference between the several photons that are inside our pulse. And uh, if we put uh, everything together, what we have is, uh, let's consider a standard grating coupler with the overlay. So the pitch is constant. What we have is that since we are increasing the effective refractive index in the region where we are going to realize the grating coupler, we can boost the coupling efficiency. At 50-50, for example, we can have something that is around 72%, for sure better than the 55-56% that we saw during the last webinar. But if we also have the concept of matching impedance, so we also apply a linearly changing variation of the pitch, so we are matching the impedance, we can boost uh, in addition the coupling efficiency and we can reach, for example, something like 85, 86%. In this case, uh, we are going below the 1 dB. So we have now a system that is really comparable with the edge coupling. Yes, and as you can see in these two movies, the apodized grating coupler reduces the back reflection and the scattering process inside the grating coupler region, boosting the amount of light that is coupled inside the waveguide. And the, these two are 3D FDTD movies. And as you can see here, uh, you can really see how the light travels and interact with the entire structures. Exactly. Now, the next step is, uh, can we prove that uh, these uh, new structures, improved structure, are suitable to realize a real logic circuit? The answer is yes. What we have to do is introduce uh, another step. That is, uh, we have to switch from 1D grating couplers to 2D grating couplers. A 2D grating couplers is a single device that is able to couple the light towards two different directions. So in this case, for example, this is a 2D system. This is our grating coupler and is able to scatter the light coming from the top 
towards two orthogonal direction, the x and the y. So in this case, we have uh, two different coupling efficiency, one for the x direction, the cx, and one for the y direction, the cy. Why it's so important? Because if we consider that uh, we are using now light that is not polarized, so we have light that is circular and polarized, in a circularly polarized beam, we have both TE and TM at the same time. So one direction is only for TE, the other direction is only for TM. And we can think to realize a circuit that is able to collect and then sum the two components. This means that we can sum, for example, the coupling efficiency traveling along the X direction with its face, plus the coupling efficiency of the light traveling along the Y direction with its own face. The sum is just a, a let's say, signal that is modulating depending on the polarization angle of the impinging beam. So in this case, we do not have a simple pulse anymore. We have something inside that can store information. This is the basic concept of the logical circuit. So what we have is something that has logic inside. Now, it's interesting also to using the Bragg formula, see that uh, changing, for example, the polarization angle, we can also change a little bit uh, the wavelength, the peak of the wavelength. This is really important because we are able to tune finally our structure or the unit on purpose. Remember that this becomes from the fact that in the Bragg law, you have everything together, the pitch, the effective refractive index and the angle of incidence that in this case is the polarization angle. The only last step that we can make to realize a great coupler that is even better is to optimize the shape. In this case, we can realize the so-called focus in great coupler. So instead of using flat trenches, we can use, you see, trenches that are on purposes bent. In this case, the trenches are also acting as focusing lenses. So the light that is scattered towards the waveguide is also focused inside the entrance of the waveguide. This is really important because we are avoiding losses from the left and right side of the grating coupler and using the apodization, we are avoiding the backscattering. If we put everything together, we can have a focusing apodized grating coupler, one dimensional as seen here in C, or if we want something that is more refined, we can also realize apodized focusing 2D grating couplers, and we can have the concept of mixing the signals, so put the information inside our modulated beam. Okay, let's say this uh, was not really easy and uh, I see that uh, it's maybe not straightforward. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask us also, let's say tough question. We are here to answer your tough question. And if you go through the uh, maybe webinar again later, feel free to mail us and ask as many questions as you want. Yeah, thank you very much, Francesco. Thank you, Luca. That was very interesting. Uh, I have a few questions myself already. Uh, and before we jump into the Q&A session, uh, let me just tell you a bit about what's coming up next. You know, this is a series. Uh, we've been doing them every uh, couple of weeks. And today's episode, um, uh, we spoke about apodized grating couplers. In the next episode, it's a special issue. Uh, Luca, what will you be talking about in the next episode? I'm going to talk about how we design the grating coupler and I'm going to talk about our design routine that is based on the particle swarm algorithm. So basically how to apply this particle swarm algorithm to the optimization of the grating coupler and how to boost the coupling efficiency. Right, so people, we will be able to learn how to do it ourselves. That's pretty cool. And um, the next episode will be in three weeks, so on the 9th of June. And uh, like I say, it's a special issue here where Luca will be uh, showing us about this optimization procedure. If you've missed an, an episode or you want to rewatch any of the previous webinars, 
You can watch them all on our Euro Practice YouTube channel. So you can just subscribe to it, uh, check it out, just go to YouTube and um, search for Euro Practice. Uh, if you want to hear about what's coming up next, so there's our series here that's about advanced photonics packaging, and there's another also series that's going on um, also by Euro Practice, uh, led by Romano Hoffman, and that is about microfluidics. Well, that is on tomorrow. Uh, you can go to LinkedIn, so Euro Practice on LinkedIn, where you can find out about the latest events and latest webinars that are coming up. So you can watch and, and, and tune in on. If you want to access some of the packaging uh, capabilities, so you have something you want to package or you want to design so it's packageable in the future, um, again, our website is a great place to go to, or just ping us an email on europractice.gateway at tendal.ie.